Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. We are excited to have another episode of The Grapevine. My name is Susan. I'm Susie. Tina. And today we have a special guest with us. Her name is Mackenzie Kaplan, and she is a certified school counselor. Um, we're going to be picking her brain today to talk about um, things that you should ask your school counselor, also getting from high school to college, and what does that look like. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm a school counselor at a Florida high school. Um, I work with all high school age students um, from ninth grade all the way through 12th grade. And I work with them on academic achievements and also social personal goals that they may have and things to work on. That's great. So I know when I think about um, high school, I, and I wish I had a counselor that I had asked these questions to before right. when I was in there because it can right. be a very confusing time. But what do you need to progress um, successfully from 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th grade? So this is this is where it's a little bit different. You know, in elementary and middle school, you're, you're almost just automatically passed along from grade to grade. When you're in high school, you have to earn credits, which means you're passing your classes. And you're passing your classes with good grades. So A's, B's, maybe a few C's here and there. Um, but you have to actually earn credits in the required courses to continue to progress and then eventually graduate from high school. So does that mean that someone is left back if they haven't gotten the grades or are they in between grades? Because when, when I was in high school, I remember if you fail certain classes, you were kind of like in between the grades and you'd have to earn those credits either going to summer school or you're going to graduate a little bit later than everyone else. Right. You're exactly right. And so it's funny. Every year we have students that will come in and say, you know, this isn't my real grade, is it? And I'll say, well, actually it is right now. Um, but we will have students that are still labeled as a ninth grader or a 10th grader, but are taking the more advanced classes because those are the classes that they should be taking. They just have to, like you say, go and take classes through summer school or Florida virtual school or any virtual school, I suppose, um, to get caught up on those credits. Virtual school, that's good. That's different from when I was back. Right. It's a big, it's a big thing these that days. Is. There's back a lot of... in my day. Right. <laughs> that's cool, one of those. Right. Oh, right. It's really interesting. Yeah. Right? Um, so tell me a little bit about the SAT and the ACT. Like those are, I know they're standardized testing, but what really are they? They are. So those are two standardized tests. Um, and the colleges, the colleges are looking for SAT and ACT scores in order to be admitted into their college. So one of the requirements for admittance is test scores. They're also looking at GPA, um, community service, things that you've done throughout your high school career. But SAT and ACT, that's, that's a big one. Um, and they're truly, they are standardized tests that are covering, the SAT will cover math and English. The ACT has a math, English, and science portion on there. So they're two different tests. So just think of two different companies like Coca-Cola and Pepsi, but it's kind of delivering the same thing and that's what the colleges are looking so for. So are you required to take both? No, you can just take one. Mm -hmm. I always recommend my students to take both, take one, then take the other, see how you do, and see if one was just naturally a little bit easier for you than the other, and see if your scores are naturally higher, and then focus on that one test to try to continue to better yourself in the one test versus studying for two tests. I think ACT is a challenging test. It's not into a lot of details as SAT. I don't know. That's how I felt. I never well, I did took it way it. better on the ACT Me too. than the SAT. Yeah. I don't so, remember right. the ACT. It really it probably yeah. depends on the person, but I it definitely does. recommend doing both. It does. Yeah. It does. And it's funny, we see a lot of our students that they will take both. So in the county in which I work, uh, we offer the SAT to the students for free, and we do it during the school day. Um, ACT is not offered for those students during the school day, so they actually have to go pay to take it and wake up early on a Saturday and go take this test. But most of our kids end up doing better on the ACT, and I don't know why, but they do. Yeah, I've never heard of the ACT until recently. So does it look? Does the college ever look at you know both of your test scores when you don't want them to look at one because you haven't done so well? Is there a way for them to not know what you've done or what you've taken if you say I just want them to look at my SATs? You can 
You can. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it necessarily matters, but you can. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like a lot of the times they end up finding out anyways because you accidentally send them updated scores and, oh, you forgot to tell them not to include that one test. <laughs> right, right. Um, but it is possible to do that. But a lot of the times what colleges will do is called super scoring. And so let's say you take the SAT two and three times mm -hmm. and you can take your better scores for the two, you know, in math, I scored really well this date that I took it. And another day I scored really well on the reading and writing portion and they can super score it, meaning take the two best scores on the individual tests and add them together. And that's your new super oh, score. I didn't yeah. Know that. yeah. Yes. They did that when I was young actually. Yeah. yeah. So they they'll do that. that with the SAT and the ACT. Mm -hmm. um, are you but, finding students take advantage of that? Or some of them were like, that was such a horrendous experience of taking this test, I don't even want to take it again. No, they always take it again. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they typically take it two and three times. Right, okay, great. Is there a max? Speaking no. Of, there isn't? No, wow. no, you can keep taking it. So if you and I wanted to go take the SAT or ACT <laughs> on Saturday, we could. I, wow. I would be too. I think I would do worse now. I agree, I, I would so too. too. <laughs> I would too. So um, with the SAT scores or the ACT score, I don't know how the ACT scores, but uh, what is the number they're looking for for a four-year college? I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> um, there isn't a magical number that anybody is specifically looking for. It depends on the college that the student would like to attend to. Um, so for example, the University of Florida mm -hmm. has a different GPA requirement versus our local state college. Um, but it really, I would, I would urge each student and parent to research the college that they're interested in and find out what the average SAT and ACT score was for the most recent freshman class. So they kind of know what they're up against okay. and they know what that school is looking for. That's really good. So that information is accessible. Like, let's say I'm like, I have my heart on being a gator, you know, yes. like, let's say that's it. And I'm like, there, so that information I can see like what the average, or do they even like, does UF advertise like what their minimum requirements are or? I think that they can get a pretty good general idea from them. Absolutely. And they can, the students can also go and the parents can also go talk to their school counselor and say, give me an idea. What do you think? You know, I, I took the SAT and I scored 1100, is that good enough? No, right. keep going, try keep again. Um, but the colleges will look for SAT or ACT scores. Mm -hmm. They look at the GPA, the classes that they took um, to earn that GPA. So there's quite a few, I guess, components that go into actually getting accepted into a college. When do you start actually taking SAT and ACT um, tests? During sophomore year or, or I would say year? And second semester of junior year. Second oh, semester. Wow. Yeah. So they only have the second semester, the summer of senior and senior year. Mm -hmm. so not they really can the start. Year. They can start their junior year if they want to, but it's typically we see students doing better. The older they are. Second semester of their junior year because they've gotten just that much, you know, a little bit more time to get the knowledge and do better. Um, algebra two is a big class that's on the math portion. So hopefully at that point they've learned a little bit more algebra, yeah. um, hopefully doing a little bit better in their math courses. Do they start applying for college at senior year? They do. They do. They can start applying in between their junior and senior years, but really by November oh, that's early. of their senior year, they should almost be done with their yes. college applications. Especially wow. if they're going to a program, like a six-year program or something, right. they have to apply early. Wow. Right. To apply to yeah. Right. Yeah. That explains a lot. Because we didn't have something in mind. I had the same problem. Yeah. <laughs> what if, what if we, have you ever encountered students that are like, I want to apply to one school? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> what, do you say? what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> oh, oh, those poor kids. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> it's, that's the funniest thing that I, you hear of all these students, again, and I'm using the University of Florida as an example, that they're not going to be happy unless they go to the University of Florida and they're a Florida Gator. Mm -hmm. Well, your chances are not... Good. I'm sure that there's some statistics out there of how many students apply and how many actually get in. Right. But I hate to see those kids that are so disappointed that they didn't get into that one school. We try to tell them to think about they could be happy here, they could also be happy here. And each school has different attributes and some good qualities that go along with them. They just need to make sure that they're getting Sometimes into one of them. Sometimes it's just hard because if they're going to a program, they have to apply outside. Right. Or like, let's say we live in Orlando. Like, for me, that was the issue. I don't want to leave home. Right. Mm -hmm. And we didn't, UCF didn't have any programs at that time. Like, mm -hmm. no pharmacy program. I think they still don't have pharmacy mm -hmm. program. No. 
no physical therapy, no medical, nothing. So now they have medical. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Now they do. Yeah. So it's it's just hard for like I feel bad too for the kids that they don't want to leave home and they want to be. Yeah, but because it's there's longer. there's a big increase in online. Oh, yes. programs. Right. So I have a former student of mine that I really, he's a great kid. He is going to the University of Florida, but he hasn't left home. He has stayed at home and oh, he no, is right. taking all of his classes oh, yes. virtually. That wasn't my days too. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's changed and yeah. it's great. It's nice. And every time I run into him, I'll ask him how his grades are and how he's doing. And he'll say, I have a 4.0 nice. still. So That's this awesome. kid is going to the University of Florida oh. and making a 4.0, but hasn't left home. Nice. So it's kind of the best of both worlds mm -hmm. for him. Yeah, that mm -hmm. really is. So um, how, how does it look when you're applying to a bunch of schools, though? Don't, don't those schools kind of... I remember the rumor when I was young is it's like it's frowned upon to apply to so many because the schools know what you're applying to, and then they're like, well, forget it. We're not going to take her. She's not really serious. Right. So is, is that, that real? Really? It is. It real? is. How do they know? How do they know what else you're applying they know to? Everything is horrible. Scary. They do. They yeah. do. Um, the general recommendation is that students are applying to four to five different schools. And the funny thing is, again, now when we were kids, this isn't how you applied to school. But there are some portals that you go through to apply to these schools, and. Some of them are Common App, Send EDU. So if you go through, let's say, Send EDU, and I apply to three schools, and then I come back a little bit later and apply to a few more schools, all of the previous schools can see, mm -hmm. wow, how many schools have you applied to? I don't really think you want to come to my school. <laughs> right. So it kind of changes things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I remember hearing when I was young, but at that time it wasn't through an app. It was, I don't know how, everything was through paper, you know, right. through essays. And I was like, how does this school know that I applied to that and to that and to that? And so right. That? Of course, I did it all late, but I mean, they all kind of knew it. Right. And so they can reject you because they're like, well, they're just going to take you and she'll be fine with that anyway. Right. So I didn't realize that that rumor was actually true. It is. It is. Mm. Yeah. How important for kids in high school to take AP classes? How does it? It's and, what, and what is an AP class? Yes, what is an AP okay, class? Okay, good question. So <laughs> AP, AP classes, there's different levels of classes in high school. So there's the standard level, that's just the basic level. If you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, there's the honors level. And then, of course, uh, one baby step up again is AP courses, and that's called advanced placement. AP is a program that is, again, offered across the entire country. So everyone knows how rigorous these classes are and they're given by College Board, which is the same people who have the SAT. So um, it's, it's recommended that if students can take AP courses and be successful, that's the key is to be successful at these courses, that they do take them while they're in high school. And they're free. Right, and they're free. Um, it is possible if a student passes the AP exam at the end of the year, it is possible that that high school or that credit could transfer to their college, mm. but it's not a guaranteed. Oh, wow. So, and that would save one credit of their um, college credits, right? It could. Mm. It could. It's possible. I, I, always, was I, thought, I thought it was guaranteed. I didn't realize it, it is wasn't. not guaranteed. Um, so it's, it's one of those that if the kid can do well, then it's excellent. Mm -hmm. But I see a lot of kids pushing themselves a little too hard, not being successful in the course. Mm -hmm. And then they've earned a D. That doesn't really right. help. So GPA. does it matter which course you choose, or like the school chooses for them? No, the student chooses. Okay. The so. student can choose whichever one they are most comfortable with. So I was more of a math person. Mm -hmm. I would not have taken AP Lang and AP Lit. Those are two English courses. Mm -hmm. I would not have taken those. I would have tried to stick a little bit more closely to what I was most comfortable with, and I knew that I could be successful in. If a student can take all kinds of AP because they're just a really smart, well-rounded kid. That's amazing. But again, I always try to focus on being successful in the course. Okay. I think that's more important. Would you suggest like different clubs for kids to attend during the school years? Like I during do. the four years? Right. I would. You do? I do. So again, if I was to describe the, the perfect student coming into high school, I would say that this student starts off immediately in ninth grade getting involved in some clubs, maybe taking on some leadership activities through these clubs as the years progress. But colleges do want to see students that came to school, they were involved in things, not just the kid that came to class, went home and studied and made a 4.0. That's great, but they didn't, they didn't necessarily get the most out of this, their schooling that they could. Mm -hmm. right. So you mentioned community service earlier. I'm kind of interested in that. Um, is it matter where they complete their community service, or is any is it all equal? 
I think it depends on where the student is going to school and what that school's requirements are. I can tell you for the high school that in which I work, um, they the students are allowed to go to really any organization that's doing something good for, I guess, the community or the environment, um, but they can't go and, you know, help the lady that lives next door bring in her groceries and say that that's community service. You know, that doesn't work. I know. But you know, a lot of the kids think that it's going to be super challenging, but it's not. If you just think about how many organizations are picking up trash on the side of the road or, you know, going Candy to the local, your, right. Yeah. Candy or your stripers. church. Like yeah. for me, I'm like, whoa, you know, you do things in church and you don't even think about it being a service and you it know, is. that right. I could apply on, put on my, you know, right. application. Right. Yeah. It's pretty that's big. True. They're teaching yeah. in Sunday school or they're doing something. That's, yeah, that's like really teaching good. in Sunday school. I mean, that's like a, a leadership thing. Mm -hmm. It is, but that one doesn't necessarily count as community service because oh, okay. they have a rule that you can't necessarily preach your faith belief. So oh, okay. I always tell the kids you can't talk about God and Jesus and really? get community service for yeah. it. But I would suggest writing, you know, when you're writing a college essay, write about that and mm -hmm. what leadership activities you've had and what you learned from mm -hmm. doing that and taking on a leadership role. And I think that's a good way to still brag about it, but not counting as community service. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that is. So um, what's the difference? What is unweighted GPA? There's, G, there's weighted GPA and there's unweighted. What's unweighted? Because I've never heard of that term before. Okay. So the two GPAs, unweighted and weighted. So unweighted GPAs may be what you're thinking of, that you earned A's, B's, and C's, mm -hmm. and you just got a GPA as a result of that. That would be your unweighted GPA. The weighted GPA is considering those honors and AP classes that we were talking about and how did you push yourself? And, you know, did I make more A's in my AP classes? Because then that looks better towards my GPA. Right. Mm -hmm. Sorry to ask you that question, but what's the difference between AP classes and honor classes? AP is just a little bit more challenging. And it's, it's really supposed to be at the college level. So you are taking almost college level courses in high school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty challenging. I always feel like standard and honors. So is there is one easier than the other? AP? Uh, honors easier than honors? Than honors is easier than AP. Oh, really? Yes, so absolutely. Do you, so you ever hear back from any of your former, uh, any former students from high school and they are in college and they're like, the college classes are easier than the AP classes we took in high school? Sometimes. You do? Yeah. Okay. They do. They do. A lot of them will take dual enrollment courses as well at our oh, yeah. local state college. Mm -hmm. And they have laughed and said that the dual enrollment courses at the college are easier mm -hmm. than the AP courses. And I understand, but you know, right. that's They've okay. more time to study in college, but yeah. <laughs> right. it's not daily like it is in high school. So I right. Because I mean, that's what I thought. I was like, okay, this is my college career. I have to take it serious. And then I went, I was like, some, not, there were some classes that were extremely tough, but then there were some that I'm like, this is actually a lot easier than high school. <laughs> right, and right. So, so. It's true. And I think it still is, Same way. it still exists, right. Okay. So do colleges look at weighted or unweighted? I think they will look at both. However, they typically tend to look at the unweighted GPA and then the classes that you took to earn the GPA. For example, if you and I have the same GPA, you've taken all these AP courses and I just took a lot of PE courses. You, your GPA is a lot better because you took more rigorous courses, courses to earn that GPA. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll look at both, but they really wanna see what classes you took to earn that GPA. So if someone has taken the tougher courses, the AP and the honors, and they didn't get that 4.0, or their score's a little bit lower, but someone who's taken a bunch of just regular classes or PE classes, and they've got that 4.0, still, does the person who's taken the harder classes, do they look at that grade even though it's lower and think, this is the person who tried hard, and yes, maybe absolutely. wasn't completely an A-plus student, but was successful anyway? Yes, absolutely. I don't think that they're necessarily looking for perfection, because I, I think that they want a kid who has done well academically, but like you say, they've, if they've struggled a little bit and really had to put in some work to earn such a good GPA, then I think the college believes that they will be successful when they get there. They're like serious. Right, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, take it seriously. Even if they didn't do as good, they stretched themselves. Right. Like didn't play it safe. Right, you know? absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That's interesting. So what courses do colleges prefer to see? They will look at, I call it the four 
five academic classes. So they will look at the English, math, science, social studies. Mm -hmm. So those are the four. And then there's also a fifth one that they look at, which is the world language. We used to call it foreign language. It's not foreign language. They call it world language now. <laughs> yeah, um, correct. <laughs> I, I, that's, that's always a struggle, but there are these kids that are amazing and go through and take four and five years of a language that they don't know and they can leave and graduate from high school that's speaking, really cool. that's amazing. reading, that's writing, language. a whole different language. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. One thing I've noticed amazing. here is that, the, that they're offering so many more languages. When I was young, it was either Spanish or French. French. And right. now I'm like, a, a, I hear that there's like Chinese and there's Arabic and there's Mm -hmm. do it. I'm like, they have what in your school? Right. Yeah, it's like right. I, they've never offered they have that, Arabic so. in high school? They have Arabic in Freedom High School. Oh yeah, but not in every school. Yeah, but I guess definitely. Well, the girl, the kids in our class, they're like, we're taking Arabic. I'm like, but you guys are born in Egypt. Why don't you take something mm -hmm. else? I, you know, I guess they're thinking it might be an easy A, but I it bet actually it won't be easy. Be. I think it's no. harder because <laughs> yeah. it's It'll like be the, proper. very hard. Yeah, it's yeah. like right. the Spanish people used to take Spanish classes. You know, the first years they were easy, but once they got to I like tried Spanish the academic. much more where they had to say yeah. everything correctly, they're like, that's not how we Which say Which is I regret it now. Right, right. I but I think it's really interesting to think about if you know what you want to do in the future, you could try and pair it up with a, the language. Right. That's you know, a like, good and question. They do. It How really can is. you decide what you want to do in the future? Yeah. What absolutely. makes you decide where do you want to go and measure it? Right. Mm -hmm. How well, can we? Going piggybacking mm -hmm. off what you just said, Susan, it's funny because a lot of our students that want to go into medicine or some sort of medical field, they always take Latin that's to try a, to that's learn. That's exactly what made me think of that. Cause right. I took, um, I was wishing everybody when I was in pharmacy school who had taken Latin derivatives mm -hmm was like, yeah, they just dissected the medical terms. Right. And those medical terms were all Latin words. Right. And they knew what they meant. And then there's me with my flashcards trying to like right. learn it. Right. So it is, I mean, Latin, if That's you're doing smart. anything medical, right. is, so like, is very in. But I'll say Spanish, too, by the way. Just, right. I would just think from great our appearance, too. because like I'd be in the pharmacy, and right. people always would come up and ask me if I speak Spanish, and, I, and I've got nothing. So, <laughs> even though I took two years. Right, you know, right. Definitely Needed more than two years. Right. I would think Greek too, actually. Yeah. Greek language would be yeah. good for medical. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now I feel like I go back. I can go back to high school. I'm like, I'm just gonna take some language classes. <laughs> I, know, I wish I had. I wish you were in my high school. Yeah. <laughs>So do you find that a lot of students actually seek their guidance counselor or their uh, their counselor for advice or do you find some of them just don't even know do are you meeting with a lot of students or a lot of them not so much cuz I never I really meet, meet with, with I meet with students all day every day and it's funny because I probably see a small handful Often. the most mm -hmm. um, but I probably have 500 students that are yeah. directly I guess that I'm directly responsible for mm -hmm. um, and I meet with them at least twice throughout their high school career mm -hmm. for a junior and then a senior credit check. So they know exactly where they are in the process towards graduation. Are they making proper progress? And if not, what do we need to do and what do we need to fix? Mm -hmm. um, and then I, that's kind of, I use that time to try to talk to them about what are their future goals and where do they see themselves going to school and mm -hmm. how are their college applications going? So I try to have a big conversation in just a few minutes and you know if you make it casual and just talk to them a lot of the times they'll open up and just tell you everything so you know what's going on but they they do know who their counselors are most of the time mm -hmm. and they always can find you when they need you <laughs> it's funny how that works yeah that's true like i know her. so that's good so they at least have those two touch points like you said right right okay at that's, least that's good that's and good. it the kids are kind of surprised that when I do finally meet them, I'll say, you know, I know that you wanted to take this class, but I think this is a more appropriate class. And so oh, that's really good. they're surprised sometimes that mm -hmm. when I say that, um, I had a student that he was a football player or is a football player because he's still there. And I will never forget that he came up and he told me that from a quick conversation that he and I had his freshman year where I told him he was not going to take standard level courses, that he was going to push himself more academically, and he did throughout his whole high school career, and now he has colleges offering him a free ride scholarships mm -hmm. for football, but also his grades because he's a great student. So yeah. it's, it's neat, and it's rewarding, and I didn't know that a quick little conversation like that would have touched him and made him push himself so hard right. all these years. So that was really... That, that sounds like a very fulfilling and rewarding job so yeah you're like you're molding our future yeah <laughs>
No pressure. Right. Yeah. No, none at all. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. Really nice. So what should students do every year to help prepare themselves for college? Wow. Okay. Every year they need to focus on their grades and their GPA. Um, a lot of students have the misnomer that freshman year, it doesn't count. Oh yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Because truly by the time you're applying to college, they're only seeing three years, your freshman, sophomore, and junior year. So mm -hmm. you need to focus on your academics every year. Um, freshman year, they also need to make sure that they're getting involved, they're making friends, and making some connections on campus with adults and faculty. Um, sophomore year, same as above, but I would also say starting to prepare for the PSAT. We talked about this a little bit ago, but the PSAT is a practice SAT and they will start taking that um, their junior year, if not their sophomore year as well. Junior year, same as above, um, but just really starting to prepare more for the SAT and ACT. It's almost like every year it just progressively gets more and more challenging and serious, but they need to start thinking of these things because junior year they need to start taking SAT and ACT um, and that's what's gonna be used for college admissions. Mm -hmm. And then finally senior year, college applications mm -hmm. and finishing out their senior year. And by the way, through all of that, they also need to do some community service that we also talked about before, right. but it's so important to show that they've given back to something that they're interested in. It doesn't necessarily have to be just one thing, but something that they're interested in. Um, it looks amazing when they're applying to college. Mm. And when they need some scholarship money, because right. they all want the scholarship. <laughs> that, was, that was a question I'm coming up with next. So, Four-year colleges are so much more expensive now than when I was going to college. So, right. how are how are parents to afford that? Like, what I know when I was young, we were applying for a federal aid and, and student aid and stuff, and I know that's available now. But it right. seems like the prices of colleges have gone up because of it. So, what? Yeah, what's the best advice? I guess my best advice with scholarships and actually paying for college is actively looking for some scholarships. Uh, we have a lot of students that will say oh, I'm not gonna to apply to that scholarship because they want me to write an essay. Right. Well, gosh, if that essay takes you two hours, but you have the opportunity to win $1,000, you just earned $500 per hour. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so I would suggest the students really looking for scholarships. They, and again, in the state of Florida, we have Florida Bright Futures, and that's a scholarship that as long as they meet the requirements, mm -hmm. they earn the money. So it's not a matter of one out of 10 can win, it's meet the requirements and you get it. Right. Um, and all of that money can be transferred to a two-year or a four-year college, whichever they choose. Mm -hmm. um, I would also suggest staying in contact with their school counselor. We always get local scholarships that are coming in, so it's nice to know who is in need and who is willing to put in a little bit of time to maybe get the scholarship. Um, <clears throat> there's different websites that they can go to Again, College Board, that's who puts on the SAT and the PSAT and the AP exams and um, curriculum, but they have a great website with scholarships. There's tons of great websites that are out there. Another one is fastweb.com. I, that one's, this one makes me laugh that I, I, des I describe it as it's a dating website for for scholarships. Wow. So it's hilarious <laughs> so that you, that really you put in everything about yourself and it tries to match you with wow. scholarships that could really be a match. I, mean, yeah. that is, I gotta neat. write that down. Yes. It's neat. And is that that's like all across the United States? It is. Like, wow. So you it what is. you like select like where you want to meet up or something? Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's quite I'm like that. <laughs> where are you? Right. That's so funny. It's really neat. Wow. It is neat. So again, if you spend some time doing that um, you can get some scholarships, and it's fast it's web. It. Who would have ever thought to look <laughs> on fastweb.com? But right. it's there's a lot that are out there. That's there's great. a lot that are out there. So what if, let's say, they, they still can't afford it, and their GPA just is not good enough to right. uh, get into get one of those scholarships? What other options do they have? A lot of our students start out at a state school, which is a we used to call them community colleges mm -hmm. years ago, but it's it's a state school now. Mm -hmm. um, and they can start at that state school. It's typically much less expensive, mm -hmm. much easier to get into. Um, the, co the classes are smaller, so that's a really neat aspect. Instead of taking a class with 400 people in there, they're taking a smaller 35 student yeah. class. Mm -hmm. um, but they can go to a state college 
complete their AA at the state college. And again, in the state of Florida, we have what's called a direct connect. Mm -hmm. They can direct connect to a four-year university and they're guaranteed admissions to the college, not into a specific program, but into a college, into oh, the college. Great. Wow, I didn't know that. So you know. can't get rejected if you complete that AA? Right. Wow, that's that's really it. Right, as long as they, they accept the, you know, they have a relationship mm -hmm. with the state college. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that McKinsey, who goes in and barely, you know, I'm not doing too well in my AA, mm -hmm. and you know, maybe I make straight C's or have a two point something GPA, I don't necessarily gain admissions to, let's say, the nursing program, but I, I am guaranteed admission to the college, and I could pick another program. field. Mm -hmm. Right. So, are there any four-year um, state colleges? They are. They are. Okay. There are. The it's funny. It's Seminole that. Seminole yeah. State College has started offering bachelor's degrees there. Great. So and Valencia too, need, right? I believe that they yeah. have. Yes, Valencia, I think. Yeah. As I well. think they have four programs. Seminole. So why would anyone want to choose a college that has 400 students in their freshman year or, or sophomore year compared to something that has 30 or 30? I went to a city university in New York. I chose that because it was cheaper. Right. And it was also smaller classes, which I loved. Right. Because I went to one that had big classes and I left right away. Like I transferred out right away. Right. And I love the city university. Um, and. I, I, City University of New York actually have a good reputation. They're not like they're not Ivy League, obviously, but they're pretty good, and you can get a great job afterwards. Right. So why would anyone choose like the colleges that have four hundred students, and they don't? Their professor doesn't even know them compared to a state college. And, and you're right. It, it's funny that a lot of them are set that that is what they want. But I almost think that it's the pressure that their parents mm -hmm. are putting on them or maybe even their peers right. that they want that college experience. And I understand. I enjoyed my four years at. At a four-year traditional college experience, and I had a great time. Um, but a lot of these students, that is just what they feel like. That's where you're supposed to go, and it's almost, I think, the stigma from years ago of going to a community college right. that it's not looked upon as favorably. But really, it's a great education. But like right. graduating from state college doesn't like. Let's say you graduated from UCF, I graduated from the state college, mm -hmm. and we went to two different interviews. Right. Does it matter to I the think company? I, I believe it would. It did yeah, when right? I when, in New York, it really doesn't matter because you have people coming from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it definitely does. I mean, obviously, someone from Harvard's going to get something better. But if I, I went to a, a, a city university, it was a four year college, and it actually was the number one school when I graduated. It beat oh, wow. Harvard in 1998. Wow. Sorry, that's my age, guys. So and so, it it kind of kind of it brought a good spotlight on the city universities because you're having students that some of them are fifty year old, four year old compared to the Ivy League, which has you know the perfect, well rounded student, and yet we were able to beat them. So eventually, that helped us with our job with our job. Search. Is that the same? Like I got. I, I was getting paid exactly the same as people who were going to private now. colleges. I don't know about now, but I I'm mean, in New York, now because I feel like the demand is different right. on every. Well, I think I think I think Susie brings up a good point, though. Is I think it's it's probably specific. Like you can you probably can't generalize it. Right. right. I think there are some what do we call them now state colleges that measure up differently than right. that one. Right. right. So it probably really just depends on you know that specific state college. Right. right? right. But I, right. I mean I would think for the most part it would be like if you came from an established university versus a state college. I would think like the that that might be like the exception, right. like the really really you know ones that are reputable like that. I guess so. Um, but yeah, I could, I could see that being situational. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I think that the hiring managers typically will know who puts who who has the better education. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, mm -hmm. who has a great program and whose program is mm -hmm. less than. Yeah. So right. I agree. Yeah. Just situational, like some of those but online programs, right? Like, right. You know, I got the same degree you did, but I did mine online. Right. You know? Right. There's, you know, everything has a reputation. Right. Right. Sure. right. So speaking of that, um, what if a student doesn't know what they want to do, what they want to major in? It's a lot of pressure to figure it out before you've ever done it. Right. So what do you recommend for them? We have a lot of students that will come to us and tell us that they have no idea what they want to do with their lives, and that's okay. I try to push them to figure out a direction or a general direction. You know, I think I'd like to go into computers, and that's okay. They don't know exactly what they want to do with the computers, but something. <laughs> right. um, but we have we have several different options for those students. They can take what's called the ASVAB, and it's a test that the military gives oh, wow. 
and it's really, it's strange, but the military gives this test and they come to our school, and this is really their way of recruiting students mm. to try to figure out their natural strengths and also what they could potentially do with these strengths as a career. So these students can come in, take this test for free at school, during the school day, um, and a few weeks later they get this printout of here's some potential careers that you would naturally be good at. Wow. Um, Man, you know what? Yeah, you said that? that? I totally took that. No. You did? I did, I did. No, I, I, never did. Took that. I don't remember what it said, but, but I, you took it. I remember specifically all of that. I remember it was a long test and it, it yeah, and you had to meet with your counselor at school and they told right. you what your we, what your results could were. Be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I never it's took that. Neat. That sounds amazing though. I just remember my guidance counselor. What do you want to be when you grow up? I'm like, I have no idea. She's right. Like, Take some liberal arts until you figure it out. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. And counselors also have maybe some different websites that you could go to that are also free. Um, just some career inventory tests that they can take, but the ASVAB is a pretty good one. That's really cool. And that's offered at every school? I don't know about every school. Mm -hmm. You would have to check, but mm -hmm. you know, if it's not offered at a student school, they can also go to any recruiting office, mm -hmm. any military recruiter's office, take the test. And of course, they're going to try to recruit them into the military. And right. that's okay. If they're interested, keep going and having that discussion. And if not, they can just simply say thank you, but no thank you. I'm not right. interested. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty neat. It's nice that there's options out there for those kids that they don't have a good direction mm -hmm. on what they want. Yeah. And at 14, 15, 16 years old, that's okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, I remember going into uh, such a funny story. My brother was in pharmacy school ahead of me, and I had no idea what I wanted to do. So he got me a jacket that said, you know, the name of the college and my name embroidered and the College of Pharmacy. And I'm like, well, I mean, I got a jacket. So, <laughs> oh my God. I was going to try this. This is like, seriously, this is how I did this. So I applied in high school right into the College of Pharmacy. So I started taking, you know, pharmacy classes my first year of college. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, um, and then basically you just had to maintain a C average, which is hilarious, just to get and then get into the pharmacy school, guaranteed. Wow. Yeah, so it was that fast. And um, it all started with a jacket or a sweatshirt? It started <laughs> with a jacket. It had my name on it. What are you going to do? Wow. What are you do? Maybe this is what we need to do, start providing jackets or sweatshirts with the, for the kids. But my first year, I'm like, was completely miserable. I was homesick, really. I was like, I'm yeah. gonna, I was like, I want to come home. I want to be an engineer. And meanwhile, I like don't like math. So my parents were like, just tough, tough it out, try your best, and um, and I stuck with it. So it's it's really interesting, it, and it's a hard time for a student. You right, know, it really is to figure out what you want to do for the rest of your life when you're like 17. Right, there's so much pressure to try to make the right decision and yes. not mm -hmm. mess it up. So mm -hmm. that's funny. That is funny. Is there any exams they have to finish before they graduate high school, like FSA? Uh, they have to finish it by senior, I think. Or before? Just before graduation. So again, in the state of Florida, to graduate from high school, you have to fulfill not only the credits that are necessary, but they also have to take an Algebra 1 end of course exam, and they have to pass it. Um, they also have to take and pass a reading FSA, which is truly just a reading test. Mm -hmm. If they don't pass it, they can take the SAT or they can take the ACT. Um, there's other exams that the students are required to take, but not necessarily required to pass. Those are the only two that they have to pass to graduate. Mm -hmm. But they, if they don't pass it the first time, they just continue to take it until they do actually pass. So they've got, you know, for Algebra mm -hmm. 1, mm -hmm. they technically have four years to take it before they, they have to yeah. pass. So I when feel does it's the much FSA, easier now. Yeah. So when does the FSA end? When's the last year that they take it? Because obviously they start at third grade. And then oh. they take it to... Okay. Well, they do. They take it... I know they take it third grade. I don't know about the elementary and middle school years, but it's 10th grade that the reading FSA is offered in high school. So they have 10th grade FSA and then 11th grade if they didn't pass it. And then 12th grade to hopefully, you know, yeah. Yeah. fingers crossed and so pray can... that they pass it to So if they to pass graduate. it at 10th, they're done with FSAs. Done. And they never have to take it again. Yeah. But good. if not, they can get the diploma, I think, right? If they if don't, they if they didn't pass it before graduation, right? They don't no, get a high school diploma. They, and this is new. We didn't. I know they didn't have this when I was a student, but right, they have yeah. a certificate of completion now in the state of Florida, mm. which means 
you did everything you were supposed oh to do, gosh. but you didn't pass your exam. Certificate so. of completion. How it's horrible. Like, so does that mean you have and a diploma? And I think or if yeah. you don't have a high school diploma. Wow. So was that like a, a general you education? It, but you didn't GED complete it well. kind of thing? Like that's, that's hard. Right. Yeah. That right. Hurts. That hurts. It does. Yeah. I know. I always feel bad for those students, but sometimes we'll make, we try to make some exceptions and let them come back a year later and continue to oh, take they the can exams. Do that. That's nice. We try. Mm. That's we try. Good. That's good. That's we try. Nice. Well, cool. One last question from us. What can a um, student do to prepare for senior year and graduation? You've given us a lot of good tips, I but know. what else? What's, what's one more thing? Um, one more thing that they can do, I would say creating that relationship with some people on campus. And that's the one thing that a lot of people seem to forget that they need some teachers on campus that really are willing and know them well enough to write a great letter of recommendation. They know their counselor so that their counselor can send them, you know, some scholarships when they come in. Again, write a great letter of recommendation. So if they've done what they're supposed to do in regards to GPA and taking their tests and, um, you know, doing community service and getting involved on campus, hopefully that would just be a natural progression. But that one is super important that sometimes they forget about. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much yes. for speaking to us no about this. Problem. It was ex extremely informative. Good. This um, was fun. Good. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Bye. Bye. <laughs>